Many times history and fiction have been cross-stitched in such a manner that the end result has been nothing short of a delightful treat. Well, this brings us to Timur Bekmambetov's 2012 action horror flick Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, which is pretty entertaining provided you keep an open mind and accept the experience that the film is offering you on its own terms. Based on Seth Graham Smith's 2010 biographical action horror mashup novel, also titled the same, this flick here is quite the reimagination one that deserves a special mention for its action sequences and let's not forget the vampires. In today's video, we will not only be exploring the movie in detail and talk about the difference between the novel and the film, but also delve deeper into the whole idea of Abraham Lincoln being a vampire hunter. We're pretty excited about this video, so without any further delay, let's jump right into it. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like the content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. President by day, hunter by night. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, movie explored. It's April 14, 1865. We get to hear the voiceover of Abraham Lincoln against a constantly changing backdrop. Lincoln is seen stating how history has always favored legends, nobility, and soaring speeches to men, brutality, and quiet deeds. He further goes on to state how history often recalls the battle but forgets the blood, and that whatever history remembers of him is nothing but a portion of the truth. He addresses himself as a man who has always struggled against darkness. By now, Lincoln is already the 16th president of the United States, and he is seen leaving his secret journal in which he has chronicled all of his life events in the trusted hands of his dear friend Henry. Mind you, the details of this friend will be divulged as we go further deep into the story. Also, it should not come as a surprise to you when we tell you that the whole movie is a recollection of Lincoln's past encounters that he had penned down in his journal, as he is heard saying that it all began when he was just a boy. The viewers are taken back to the year 1818, where we find Lincoln along with his parents residing in Pigeon Creek, Indiana. Lincoln's parents, Nancy and Thomas, are seen working at a plantation, one that's owned by a certain Jack Bartz. One day, Lincoln finds his African-American friend, Will, getting thrashed by a slaver, and unable to take the brutality inflicted on his friend, Lincoln interferes in the matter, followed by his parents. This naturally results in Lincoln's parents losing their job at the plantation. That very night, Lincoln finds Bartz sneaking into their house and doing something to Nancy, which strangely makes her very sick and causes her death the following day. While Thomas tells Lincoln that Nancy died due to Bartz poisoning her, he also makes his son promise to not do anything foolish. Nine years later, after Thomas died, Lincoln was no longer bound by the promise and he made up his mind to pursue his vengeance on Bartz. With Lincoln eventually locating Bartz at the docks, he ends up shooting him only to discover that Bartz is actually a vampire. What ensued was a brief skirmish between the duo, with Bartz easily gaining the upper hand on Lincoln, and had it not been for the timely intervention of a man called Henry Sturgis, that night would have pretty much marked the end of Lincoln. While Lincoln passes out, he finds himself waking up at Henry's home the next morning. For those of you wondering who this Henry is, yes, he happens to be the same Henry who Lincoln, at the beginning of the movie, entrusted with his journal. As we move ahead with the story, Lincoln realizes Henry is the same man that he had encountered at a bar to previous previous night before he had attacked Bartz. Henry gets straight to the point. He addresses vampires as immortal blood-sucking demons and tells Lincoln that they're not only real, but that they very much exist amongst them. On Lincoln's persuasion, Henry offers to teach him how to be a vampire hunter. As part of training, Henry introduces Lincoln to various weapons like the Scottish Highland Pistol and the Blunderbuss, but Lincoln finds himself way more comfortable wielding an axe as he happened to be a rail splitter before. It's also during this extent training that Henry imparts a lifetime of vampire hunting secrets to Lincoln and tells him about Vadama the ruthless enforcer and her brother Adam, the latter responsible for all the vampires in America. As for Henry, vampires have existed in the New World for centuries, butchering the local tribes and early settlers. So when the Europeans first appeared along with their slaves, the vampires saw that as their wicked opportunity and eventually built an empire in the south. However, with the vampires pressing north in recent years and leaving behind a trail of death, vampire hunters had to intervene to maintain the balance and to ensure that the place at the end of the day remains a nation 
of men and not monsters. Post the training, Henry sends Lincoln to Springfield with a specific reminder. No attachments, no distractions, no friends or family, only to have Lincoln end up being friends with the local shopkeeper, Joshua Speed. That's not all. Lincoln, despite Henry's strict rules, falls in love with a woman named Mary Todd. It's also around the same time, Lincoln starts dispatching vampires one after the other, following an updated list that Henry keeps sending him. Eventually, Lincoln reconnects with his old friend Will and encounters Senator Nolan. The latter, impressed with Lincoln's The Cost of Freedom speech and its strong voice, suggests him join the field of politics, further stating to Lincoln that he can't connect him with the right set of people. Henry finally pays Lincoln a visit, tells him that the time has arrived for Lincoln to kill Bartz and gives him a silver pocket watch. This has Lincoln returning to the docks once again to kill Bartz, and this time, he is successful in carrying out his mission. But before Bartz draws his last breath, he discloses Henry's real identity to Lincoln, the sole fact that he also happens to be a vampire himself. Of course, this leads to a confrontation between Lincoln and Henry, where the former learns about the latter's loss. Years ago, Henry had not only lost the love of his life at the hands of Adam, but had also transformed into a vampire himself after Adam bit him. While his wife died instantly, Henry did not and in turn became a vampire because of his soul being impure. Post the transformation, Henry did attempt to kill Adam but realized that vampires could in no way hurt their own kind and that only the living could kill the dead. No wonder Henry has been training vampire hunters since then with the sole purpose of wiping out Adam. Lincoln bid Henry goodbye after hearing his story and dissatisfied, he decided to put an end to the mission. Next, he is seen asking Mary to marry him, and with Mary gladly accepting his proposal, both are seen getting happily married to each other. Henry attends the duo's wedding, and Lincoln introduces him to Mary as his business associate. While Henry is seen asking Lincoln to be careful, Adam is seen learning of Lincoln's activities, especially after he discovers Lincoln's silver pocket watch that had come under the possession of Bart's during their fight. Thinking of ways to bring Lincoln to him, Adam has Will kidnapped, so as to tempt Lincoln to his plantation in New Orleans. Lincoln goes to rescue Will along with Joshua, but Adam is able to capture him. With Adam telling Lincoln tales of how in the span of 5,000 years, he has seen Jews build Egypt's glory, Christians thrown in front of lions as well as Africans selling their own kind to the Europeans. He eventually offers him a position amongst the undead and reveals to him his real intentions of turning the whole country as a nation of the undead. Lincoln refuses to join him and with the help of Joshua, he is able to save Will and escape from there. Soon after, Lincoln is seen embarking on his political career, Will's fighting for the very soul of the nation. He strongly believes that until every man is free, everyone's a slave in is seen campaigning for the abolition of slavery. Henry warns Lincoln and states to him that slavery has been the only thing which has kept the vampires sated for all these years. So naturally, with Lincoln interfering with the slave trade, the vampires are bound to retaliate against him. With Henry seeing things his way, Lincoln starts looking at the same thing from a different angle, and it dawns upon him that there are greater issues at stake. Lincoln finally comes to the conclusion that while he will carry on fighting, he will not do so childishly with an axe, but with the words and ideals. The dual combination eventually proved to be a stronger weapon, and Lincoln emerged as the President of the United States. After relocating to the White House with Mary, they had a son named Willie together. Speaking of the nation, it had already started to tear itself apart by then, and with Lincoln signing the Emancipation Proclamation, his actions ignite the American Civil War, setting it in motion. Tragedy strikes the Lincoln family when Willie gets bitten by Vadoma and dies as a result of the bite. Henry addresses Willie's death as just the beginning and tells Lincoln that he had warned him of the consequences. With Lincoln sending in Union troops, Confederate President Jefferson Davis has Adam asking him to send his vampires to the battle lines. The Battle of Gettysburg is nothing short of a complete disaster. Starting from bullets to bayonets, everything seems to be useless against the vampires. It's while having dinner with Mary and discussing the consequences of the battle with her that he finally realizes the weakness of the vampires while holding a silver fork. He remembers Henry telling him how silver Silver had become a curse upon the Curson, and has every silver item in the region melted so as to make silver weapons out of them. Joshua, on the other hand, holding Lincoln accountable for tearing the nation apart, informs Vadoma that Lincoln will be transporting the silver weapons to Gettysburg by train. Naturally, when this news reaches Adam, he is more than ready to end their millennia of darkness and attacks the very train along with Vadoma in their force. Henry, who has also come to assist Lincoln, informs him of Joshua's betrayal, only to learn that everything was just 
as a part of the plan. Lincoln and Will are seen bravely fighting against the vampires until they face Adam, who goes without saying overpowers the duo. Adam is just about to bite Lincoln and it almost feels like he has bitten Lincoln only to realize that he has sunk his teeth into the flesh of Henry instead. While a highly agitated Adam is seen indulging in a brief fight with Henry, Vadoma, on the other hand, is seen setting the approaching bridge on fire. Adam eventually realizes that there is no silver on the train and that it's just carrying rocks for that matter. Upon grasping the fact that he has been tricked, he attacks Joshua who tells him that he lied so that he could get all the vampires in one place and finish them. Of course, this does not work well on Joshua's part as he gets bitten and killed by Adam. With the train passing over the burning bridge, Adam confronts Lincoln and demands to know where the silver is. This has Lincoln taking out his silver pocket watch and stabbing Adam with it in his chest, thereby killing him. As for Lincoln and Will, they are able to flee from the train right before it explodes with the help of Henry. While Lincoln is seen thanking Henry, the audience learns that Mary, with the help of the ex-slaves, has already managed to deliver the silver safely to Gettysburg and on time take the Underground Railroad. Upon spotting Vadoma in Gettysburg, Mary finally avenges her son's death by shooting the vampire right in the head with a silver necklace, which was basically a toy sword that Willie used to play with. The Union troops now armed with silver weapons are finally able to destroy the leaderless Confederate vampires and emerge victorious in the war. Upon seeing that America will always be a nation of living and free men, the remaining vampires have fled the country, some to Europe, some to South America, and some to the Orient. Henry offers to make Lincoln immortal so as to continue their fight against the vampires, but the latter declines his offer. The audience is brought back to the first scene of the movie where Lincoln is seen leaving his journal in the trusted hands of his dear friend Henry and going to attend a theater with Mary. The movie ends in the current times. A man's sitting in a Washington, D.C. pub and getting drunk when Henry approaches him in a similar fashion as he had approached Lincoln, with him slapping him on his back and a gun falling down on the floor. Differences between the novel and the film Oh, there's plenty of it, and to begin with, the primary difference between the book and the film is that there's no central villain in the book. The antagonist happens to be the whole vampire lot, whereas in the movie, Adam happens to be the core vampire leader, one from whom every other vampire descended from. In the book, Henry resorts to his powers and alters Lincoln into a vampire, which is basically the best plot twist, but in the movie, he is unable to do so as Lincoln declines his offer. In fact, in the film, Henry is seen recruiting vampire hunters. Also, the character of Henry in the book has a very intriguing origin, and it's only fair to state that the book primarily deals with Lincoln and Henry. The movie even has new characters, for instance, the African-American character Will never really existed in the book. Speaking of vampire rules that the movie had on display, the fact that vampires cannot kill other vampires is nothing but a new addition. Last but not least, the character of John Wilkes Booth, post-shooting Lincoln dead in the book, is seen hiding in a barn and getting arrested by the Union troops. Please Please know that nothing as such has been shown in the flick. Was Abraham Lincoln really a vampire hunter? In all probability, no, but even if he wasn't real, there are no official documents that state him as a vampire hunter. Having said that, Abraham Lincoln also happens to be the only president to sport a bearded look, which, for your information, happened to be his signature look. But here's the strangest thing. Lincoln, for the major part of his life, was reported to not have any facial hair. Speaking of his mother's death, while it is true that he did witness his mother dying, but that was not because she was killed by a vampire. It was because of something back at that time known as the milk sickness. Apparently, Lincoln's mother contracted the disease post-consuming the milk of cows that had eaten the white snake root plant. After the death of Lincoln's mother, his father had remarried, and Lincoln was raised by his stepmother. Now we all know Lincoln was very tall. To those wondering what his height was, Lincoln stood at 6 feet 4 inches and was categorically the tallest president. In fact, he was so tall that even when he sat, he was as tall as an average height man standing. It was also reported that Lincoln had a dream just seven days before his death at the hands of John Wilkes Booth, where he found himself walking through the White House and finding everyone crying. Upon asking why everyone was crying, he learned that the president had been killed. Whatever you want to address this, say fact or fiction, it's your call. Marvelous Verdict Right from the commendable action sequences, the incredibly choreographed axe-wielding, to the effective slow-motion camera work on display, and let's not miss out on the epic Civil War battlefield scenes, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter is an entertaining piece that deserves to be watched. Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here, so have you watched the movie yet? Hit us with your thoughts in the comments section and let us know what it is that you fancy the most about this flick here. Also, stay tuned with us and we promise to come back with more more exciting content. If you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!